Welcome back to The Broadway Show. I'm Tamsin Fidel. Let's get back to it. It's Broadway's brand new farm to table fable. It's the new musical, Shucked. We're checking in with Beth Stevens at the new 42 Studios. Thanks, Tamsin. Shucked pairs Grammy-winning songwriters Brandi Clark and Shane McAnally with Tony-winning writer Robert Horn for a countrified fable with a whole lot of corn. I checked in with them as they readied this new musical for Broadway. So this is a brand new musical. People probably don't know what Shucked is about. Can you give us just a, a real quick idea? <laughs> we should be better at this by now, as many people ask what it is, especially with the title. I mean, mm -hmm. we think that the title is a funny pun or uh, just fun to say, but oh my God. How many times do you have to repeat it and repeat it? And then they say, oh, like oysters? And, you're like, and I always do them. I'm like, you know, shucking corn. Well, it's a fable. A farm to fable. It's about a, fic a you know a fictional town called well a county. It's not even a town. Cobb County, and it is surrounded by a corn wall. And what happens is the corn literally a wall a of corn. A literal wall of corn. No one has left. No one has ever come to the town. But the corn starts to die, and so their way of life is in jeopardy because everything is fueled by the corn. And so they have to make the brave decision to leave. And there's only one person who is, is brave enough to leave, and that's our heroine, Maisie. And she goes to the big city looking for someone who will help fix the corn. And I'll give this one little part away without giving too much. She meets a corn doctor who's a, really a podiatrist. It's just a comedy of errors from them. Maybe love is like a seed. A little sun is all it needs. A little rain, a little rain. So it goes, and so it goes. And it grows and grows and grows and grows from dust. You're known for writing songs that really come from the heart. So tell me how it is to sort of marry your style with this Broadway corny fable. It is ridiculous, and there is a corniness to the idea, but when you get into the heart of it, at the heart of it, are these characters that are colorful and relatable and human amongst this cartoon-like world. And that is what appeals to us. So yeah, it's a musical about corn, but it's about family, it's about community. And there are moments where you're laughing so hard and then moments where most people who have seen it are crying. You laugh till you cry and then you cry till you laugh. And hopefully, you know, everyone will feel that. And I think, I think they will. To speak to our music and our songs, we wrote songs that we really wanted to be able to stand alone outside of the musical. We were so intentional on trying to write hit sounding songs within this original musical. Songs that people didn't know, but they would feel like they did. My best friend, I'll be yours until the end. Blood is thick and whiskey's thin when we're together. Friend, my old friend, ins and outs and outs and ends. We've been family all our lives, but we'll be friends. Friends forever. You two are very well known for being good friends, getting along. Tell me how you work together. It's special. I, there's nobody I work with like Shane. But I think what we really have going for us is that we have a respect for each other where we can say, pardon the pun, the corniest thing ever, and the other one doesn't shoot it down, riffs off of it, and turns it into something great. We always preface with, this isn't it, mm -hmm. this isn't it. It's like, not this, but something like this. It's a dream collaboration. I, I, I do get so emotional thinking about what this career, this life would be without her. You know, I can barely look at her when I talk about her, but we're so lucky that we found each other and the timing was so perfect because not only did we really help each other at a time in our country music writing careers where we both really felt like it was never going to happen for us and we had been doing it for a long time. We met right at the right time that this came together and I feel like this will be our, our biggest legacy. Tell me a little bit about what you've learned 
from the world of Broadway as you're entering it now? I think mostly just that you can sit in a room around a table for five or six hours with people and this was really hard for us to adjust to at first because the team would want to just, let's just get together mm -hmm. and do what? Let's just get together and see what comes up. And her and I are like sitting at a piano, grabbing our guitars going, let's do something. It's yeah. like, no, we're just gonna talk about the story, talk about the characters. That was very unusual uh, for us. And, and now I get it. And it, I feel like we've learned to be patient with those ideas and also learn to not be precious with our songs. I mean, we've written 50 songs and there certainly aren't 50 songs in the show and they just keep changing. Yeah. You know, there was early on in this, I remember there was a time when, when Robert Horn, the book writer, changed one little plot line and it meant we had to rewrite nine songs because it changed everything that came after it. We're working today on an, an act two opener and I have a feeling that the song that we have, there's gonna be a lot added to it and maybe taken away and, and but you know, it's all for the greater good of the, the storytelling. That's another thing that's really different about doing it this way or, or being in this world. Everybody really respects everyone's lanes. And I think that's amazing because I do think in popular music, uh, in the making of, everyone at the label gets involved. People that aren't musical get involved. And we have to hear from everybody like, oh, it doesn't sound like a hit. Here, we're trusted. This was the job we were given. This is what the story calls for. You guys go write what you think. And um, although it doesn't always end up in the show, it always has a chance. They always give it a chance.